If you're an iPhone user, then you know two things right about now. One, there is two new iPhones coming this Friday and two iOS 8 just opened to the public. So what's changed on Apple's new software? Apple's eighth generation of their software called iOS 8 just went public today for any iPhone 4S and above and iPad 2 and above user to download and there are a few new features that are worth talking about. First of all is the design, both on iPhone and iPad. Well, they look pretty identical to iOS 7 on these devices, but on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, you will have some extra row of icons, plus some subtle changes on the 6 Plus thanks to its extra room. The biggest changes come in form of interactive notifications, like giving you options to reply to texts, emails, and invitations right from the notification itself. These will come in handy when you don't want to leave the current application you're in. You also have a new recent shortcuts to people you most recently spoken with or people you speak to all the time. These just show up by going into your multitasking view by double clicking the home button and if you're just wondering the feature works on both iPhone and iPad. The next feature is pretty simple these days but spotlight search is now even smarter. To get to spotlight just swipe down from any home screen and up comes spotlight and unlike before spotlight will now search your iPhone, the web, the iTunes store and app store, movies, food and maps all in one place. So if you look up a movie you get your movie times, locations of the theaters, and much more. The last neat design feature is found on Safari and it's only beneficial to iPad. Safari on iPad has incorporated a new tab view that's more in line with the Safari upgrade on OS X Yosemite. It has a new beautiful transparent back which gives you a bird's eye view of all your tabs plus your iCloud tabs on all your other devices. Plus there's a new gesture where you can simply pinch out to zoom out and get to your tab view. Now Mail on iOS 8 has gotten a much needed feature bump including a new swipe feature that allows you to delete, archive, move, and do other sorts of things, but with the iPad app and the iPhone app, you can actually hide drafts on the bottom and then go to other emails and maybe grab more information. The next feature I'd like to talk about is the new Apple Keyboard. While it may look exactly the same as the old Apple Keyboard, it does give you a new feature called Quick Type. This is a predictive text engine that sits on top of your Apple Keyboard that gives you predictions of what you're about to type. And from the time with my Golden Master Key software, where it's not finished at all, actually. But I guess the biggest news for iOS 8 is the ability to install third-party keyboards, including Swipe for all you Android fans. Now, Messages in iOS 8 has received a slight overhaul with the additions of adding Snapchat-like features. You can send photos, audio recordings, and video by just pushing the left or right side. Only downside is it only currently works with iMessage. Now, Photos in iOS 8 has also received new updates, including smarter search engines, including location and the people in the photos, plus a host of new editing tools. This allows you to do more of your photos and post with your photos right off of your phone. Now it's no Photoshop, but it does allow you to get your edit of the crop, change the tilt, plus a host of exposure and color options. You actually will probably be amazed at how much you can do right from your iPhone and well, it's kind of fun. And on the photo taking side of things, the camera application does give you a few new features. One big one is time-lapse mode, which well records videos in intervals and it makes it all into one video. The other big one is really exciting for me and it's exposure controls right in the camera application. So basically what this means is you'll be tapping on your subject and the iPhone will automatically get exposure but you can then manually adjust it. There is one more feature of iOS 8 I want to show you here which is called Health. This is Apple's newest application to iOS 8 which is a hub for all of your health stats. For example on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus will be able to track how many steps you walk plus all the flights of stairs you walk up and down. This is all thanks to Apple's new motion co process called the M8. But health is going to be a very essential application for anyone who purchases the Apple Watch because you'll get your heart rate information, you'll get how many steps you walk, how many flights of stairs, plus a lot of great information that you'll be getting right off your wrist from your Apple Watch. Now those aren't all the features of iOS 8. Now there is iCloud Drive and family sharing plus continuity, but these features are meant to work in the background to improve the experience of iOS 8 and not all of them are currently available like continuity. And from the past months of using betas and the past week of using the golden master key, iOS 8 is a great improvement from iOS 7. It may not look radically different or have impressive new features, but it's a great upgrade in every single way. Plus, for some reason, my iPhone 5S just has a little bit more battery 
battery life than iOS 7. Not sure if that's just me though. So that's iOS 8 in a nutshell, or maybe a little bit more than that. It's a great new software in all rights, and it adds a bit more life to previous generations of Apple devices. But if you're expecting a huge update, look elsewhere because you really won't find it here. And as always, my name is Marco Hanna from PhoneDog.com, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.